Hello everyone out there, it's HK Fanatic again. And what you're looking at is the Sig Sauer 522. In my opinion, the ultimate 22 long rifle. Yes, even ahead of the Ruger 1022. Alright, there's a lot of you are going to say, well, the Ruger 1022 is proven, uh, it's got all these accessories, uh, you can get a you can get a drum magazine for it. Well, I'll tell you right off. Get go already. This is a standard six hour twenty five round magazine. But black dog magazines will also work in this weapon. And one of the magazines they make that will work is a fifty round drum. Um, again, some quick views. Uh, overall, the upper receiver, barrel, and gas block assembly are, of course, made out of uh, stamped steel. And the upper receiver has a weatherized coating that is the same one that you find on the actual uh, SIG 552 Commando. <laughs> uh, and if I'm correct, the SIG 556 also has that same, uh, it's almost like an anechoic rubber, pure, it's a very stout, you can feel the, uh, it's almost like pressing on rubber itself, but anyway, it does help to seal in the upper receiver. The barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel, the same as you would find on their uh, on their other rifles, the Sig 556, the Sig 552. Uh, the front hand grip is polymer, lower receiver, very heavy duty polymer. Retract uh, retractable buttstock, capable of being retracted to, well, three positions, not an awful lot, but and of course, all the way open. Sling mounts. There's one here or you can simply mount the uh, strap through the rear and you have a front sling point attachment there um, the stock is collapsible right here is the release you simply press it and you can fold the stock around a few things on this side of the weapon that you don't see your bolt locking lever is right here you simply Pull the bolt to the rear and press on your lever, it will lock the bolt to the rear. And to release the bolt, you can either press the lever or pull on the bolt in the rear lock position and it'll go forward. It does lock open on an empty magazine, which is excellent, in my opinion. Uh, ambidextrous safety controls. Okay, one thing I did do to modify this is I painted with enamel paint a white, the, uh, the, safe and fire positions are indented in the polymer so all I did was simply take a toothpick and with some white uh, model enamel paint I painted the S and the uh, F with red okay another good ambidextry just a quick note on that you have safe and fire um, these controls take a little getting used to because there is let me set it here. You would think that the lever, of course, pointing straight forward is safe at an angle of fire. As you can see, there's a little notch here, and when the notch is pointing is the actual position of your safety. That is safe. Weapon cannot fire. Um, a breakdown of this weapon is a snap. You simply, these are two captive screws. You don't need anything special to push them through. You push with your finger, the screw will pop out on the side, pull it out. That will enable the weapon to open up like any M4 or M16. From here you simply pull straight out, you can remove the charging handle, and the whole uh, bolt and carrier will come out the rear of the weapon. And since they are captive, you don't have to worry about these screws coming out. Uh, to simply remove the entire, to separate the weapon, follow the instructions in the manual. You push both of them out, and you can lift up and then remove the handguard to mount either the, uh, I haven't ordered the optional uh, rail kits yet, but it's a set of three rails for $20 from Six Sour. Okay. One thing, my weapon did not come with or any sights whatsoever. It's got a flat rail. You can order optional sights, but it's over $200 to get them. Okay, and for most people, it's like, well, what am I going to spend that kind of money? You can buy any aftermarket rail-mounted rear flip-up sight. 
This one I got off of my SIG 552 Jingong Commando. It is an airsoft sight, but the, the actual groove was the right size to fit in the sight groove. So for me, well, you know, if it works, it works. And you can flip it up or down as you need. But I, what I would recommend to most people is simply go buy yourself a good red dot sight. Again, the sky's the limit. Uh, this is temporarily, it's a BSA red dot. I intend to replace it with a Bushnell Trophy T dot. It's about 140 bucks, but I just like the sight. I've used it a couple of times on a couple of my friend's weapons. I think it's a very, very good gun sight, and that's the one I'm going to put on here. Um, as far as uh, any negative comments I have to make, well, one problem is right here. This, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, this is the notch. This whole assembly simply fits in through the buttstock here, and these forks expand to hold it in the actual slot cut in the buttstock. When you collapse your stock and you press it in, before I uh, made any changes to it, Sometimes you would, and it is hard to get this to engage. You have to press with a good amount of force to get it to actually latch on. And once you do, again, you have to press hard to get it to unlatch. And one out of four times, this hole, which runs through the entire, this assembly, which runs through the entire, this uh, entire pin would stay, would get pulled out and stay stuck on the notch here forward. But I fixed it by simply inserting you simply insert a piece of rubber or plastic inside to make sure that these forks stay expanded and that will end that problem. Uh, I'm pretty sure SIG will fix that on, on future versions of the weapon. Uh, again, also ambidextrous magazine release on both sides of the weapon for lefties or righties. I think that's another very, very good uh, option. Trigger pull crisp at around 5 pounds. And overall a very solid weapon, but bear in mind unloaded with an empty magazine and this is a 25 rounder not the 10 rounder the weapon weighs about six and a half pounds not exactly very light but uh, again overall if you want a, so a solid tactical feeling 22 long rifle I can't think of a better choice the kel SU-16 is also another good choice but let's face it this just looks a lot better hands down Nobody's going to debate that. Um, overall finish, again, like I said, is excellent. Quality is uh, like any other Sig Sauer. It's not going to let you down. Um, until I go shoot at some, I, I really can't really rate on the uh, firing abilities of it. But like any other Sig Sauer quality uh, weapon, I don't think that's going to be a problem. The barrel is uh, it's a coal hammer forged barrel with an actual flash suppressor and it is threaded. The uh, like the SIG 556, 552 and the other models uh, would normally have a gas piston system. This is a blowback system. This is just a storage area. You can move the front pin and there's area to store you know, batteries, whatever you can fit in a small cylinder that runs. It's about that wide and just simply runs back inside the handguard and the hand grip. There's a notch where you can simply press in. You can open up the, the uh, there's an empty storage area here for batteries or whatever else. A little can of oil, whatever you need to put in there. That will uh, serve. Again, looking down inside the weapon here. You can look into the actual, there's the bottom of the uh, bolt. Overall, like I said, I'm very impressed with the, with the SIG 522. Haven't had a chance to shoot it, but I will. Ordering some spare magazines here also. Uh, you can get them from Sig Sauer's website. For the same price, you can get them from uh, Black Dog, which also makes the same exact magazine. They're about uh, $24, $25. And, of course, add tax. Um, for now, that's going to be all on this one. Oh. And in the next module, I'll take it out and try to give it a, give it a little testing just to see how good it shoots. But... Uh, my expectations, I think it'll do very well. Till then, HK, Fanatic, out.